Okay, this is Tom from anti-proton.com, and this is just a little goofball video. My, uh, uh, well, my sky is falling. I have rain going off all over the place right this moment. I went outside and got some clean caught, uh, 140 milliliters, 150 milliliters, something like that, of clean caught water in a beaker. The pins here, because the Polymaster is kind of dumb and doesn't sit up right. If you don't put something underneath it, the beaker will slide right off. And I've been taking a spectrum of it and have a Geiger counter here. And a scintillation counter, by the way, too. Scintillation counter. This scintillation counter actually has a cesium-137 check source. So I have it kept a few feet away so that it won't be interfering with the spectrum too much. And formal gamma spectroscopy, of course, I would have a lead castle and not have any sources anywhere remotely near it. But let's see what we have here. Here's our spectrum. So far, not much going on. Uh, if we do an identify, we'll see what we get. The identifier is probably going to mess up because there's not enough going on to even identify worth anything. Uh, Protactinium-234, bismuth-212, it's quite uncertain about both of them, but both of those two are uh, progenic isotopes of uh, uranium and thorium. Uh, actually, yeah, respectively. If we zoom in to what everybody wants to see, which is whether there's cesium 137 that right there. That's where the cesium-137 should be. There's a little peak just past it, but it's only 10 counts in 10 minutes, so that's maybe something. It could be cesium-137. It could be picking it up from my scintillation counter. Well, it's certainly not accounting for the radioactivity in the water right this moment. I am getting some stuff over here from where uranium is usually found. Right there is a lead-214 peak, right around 2... Uh, 38, somewhere right around that area. This one should be 295-ish, and it's close, 286. This should be around 340, 350, and it is. And there should be one eventually forming around uh, around um, 609, but I don't see it yet. That's a bismuth 214 peak, and it will f start forming, but it hasn't gotten there yet because the actual decay chain is still working its way down really slowly, which is kind of really neat to watch. Because I, when I first was running this about uh, 20 minutes ago, I didn't see any of these at all, and now I do. The, uh, the decay products are slowly building. It's actually quite amazing. Anyhow, just for the record, I got this off of a car. This is a swipe of paper off of a car. Uh, let's take this Geiger counter, which is sitting around 20, 30 counts per minute. Move this away, put this in place, stick that on top, and see what we get. Off the car, I always get a better read. Something about the metal something about that metal seems to concentrate everything and make it better because by god do I get a better read off of a car than I do off of a clear fresh caught water see the fresh caught water just doesn't do it for me ironically the Geiger counter is doing much better than the scintillator I mean the scintillator is all nice and scientific and exact and everything and lets me see what there is and what there isn't inside the water but if you just want a, a nice gross read this Geiger counter is actually pretty good the inspector and of course, like the PRM, uh, what is that thing called? The PRM 9000, it would probably be pretty good too, since it has the same uh, tube, the LND 7317 tube. Neat! Obviously, I don't need to sit back and calculate standard error. I'm pretty sure that 20 or 30 counts per minute up to 80, 90 counts per minute probably is enough to say that's probably radioactive. The scintillation counter, let's see what it does. Um, switch the sound on. We're sitting around 2,000, it's in the times 10 mode, so about 2,000 counts per minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, um, this right here and fold it up so it's nice and tight. And I'm going to put this scintillation counter right here and make sure that it's been backgrounded a little bit. And then put it near. Almost dead on for 2,000 counts, good god. Okay, so, move that over just a little, oops, put it down, put that in place, stick it on top, see if it goes up a little, pull back, see nothing weird going on, I guess, and it does go up a little, but you see it only goes up about 200 counts per minute, which is a very small amount, let me move this over and see if I can get a hotter spot, spot on the bag, maybe a tiny bit hotter, but not really. So just not very much gamma activity coming off of this at all, but it certainly makes a neat little spectrum. Well, anyway, I just wanted to uh, yap for about five minutes. So 
uh, the rain's radioactive. It's coming from radon washout. It's pretty conclusive. Don't see any cesium-137. Probably could find some if I had a high purity germanium detector. It's usually there. I mean, you know, a few becquerels per liter of it, but nothing to write home about. So there you go. Oh, and just for giggles, in the event that you did want to see what a cesium-137 spectrum would look like if it were in this, here, let me take my check source now that we're done doing the test and put that right over top and see what that looks like. Bet you that'll look a little different. Uh, yeah. See it starting to build? Six sixty-two kV, almost right in the dot. That's really starting to build. I hear the thunder in the background. Could it go? And it's a very, very weak check source. It's only a tenth of a microcarry. But that's what season one thirty-seven would look like if it was in the water. <laughs> so Tom from anti-proton.com and um, bye bye.